Well, the use of mobile phones in a car is forbidden for the driver today, uh, simply due to safety and legal reasons. Um, the idea behind it is uh, cr crystal clear. It shall minimize or at least uh, lower uh, driver's distraction. Well, um, consequently, the driver is encouraged to use hands-free communication in a vehicle, and car manufacturers today equip all their car models with hands-free functionality, which is typically a part of the infotainment system. This brings up the next question, how to optimize these systems in uh, every vehicle, and the car manufacturers spend a huge effort to do exactly this, adapt the algorithms on the acoustic properties of, in each vehicle. And this brings up the next question, what are the tests and requirements for this purpose? And this is one of the key roles of ITUT providing its P.1100 series recommendations for communication from motor vehicles for narrowband, wideband, super wideband and even full band communication including e-call scenarios. Well, such a setup is demonstrated here in this nice test car which is kindly provided by Hyundai Motors. The setup consists of a dummy head which substitutes the driver. It consists of a background noise simulation system here that simulates acoustically driving conditions. And um, this brings up one more question about the role of a mobile phone because we indicate here on these stickers, test your phone's performance um, in a vehicle hands-free environment. So and this could best be explained in the vehicle, perhaps. We can move to the vehicle, Priv. What happens if the driver enters a vehicle with his mobile phone? The infotainment system providing the hands-free functionality will detect the mobile phone and link it via Bluetooth. Um, the infotainment system needs the mobile phone to access the mobile network. However, the signal processing relevant for speech quality transmission is implemented in the head unit in the uh, infotainment system solely. So it uses the mobile phone only for network access. And this is very important. So the infotainment system indicates to the head, to the mobile phone, that the signal processing is done by the head unit and not by the mobile phone. So the mobile phone should switch off internal signal processing and just provides network access. Otherwise, we have two cooks in the same kitchen and this may degrade quality. The car manufacturers do not have control over the mobile phone, so they rely on transparency and audio gateway functionality of the mobile phone. And this brings up the next topic where ITUT can help out as they define tests for mobile phones in such a scenario. Well, as I mentioned before, ITUT uh, also recommends tests for mobile phones in isolation. So we can extract it from the measurement setup, including the whole vehicle, and test it in a simulated environment, which is shown here. This device simulates the, or takes over the role of the infotainment system. It is a Bluetooth reference device. And here on the right hand side we have a mobile network simulator. So the, the reference device here, the Bluetooth reference device, connects via Bluetooth to the mobile phone, which connects itself to the mobile network simulator. And in this scenario, tests can be carried out in order to verify the performance and transparency of the mobile phone in isolation, excluding it from the setup, including the whole vehicle. And ITUT hosts a website with mobile phones which are compliant to these tests. And at that point, I can hand over to Dennis Andre from ITU who can give a bit more information about this. Here, uh, I want to tell you about the uh, list of mobile phones uh, which we have on ITU webpage. In principle, we organize several test events of mobile phones uh, with a hands-free terminal system and the successful phones were added to the special list which is uh, made available on the ITU website. Uh, all uh, car makers now can uh, recommend these phones uh, for their customers to use in their cars.